have a rock. The following broadcast is paid for by the partners and friends of Oren and Medina Pullings Ministries. Get ready for God to fight for you when you release the sound of praise in this place. God, God is going to fight for you. Lift your voice and praise him while you're praising while you're praising, angels are moving. While you're praising, hindrances are being removed out of your way. I tell you to shout. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him for heavenly intervention. Watch God, watch him do it. We speak to nations, be open. How many know God wants you to walk in complete and total peace? I don't know exactly how God's going to do this thing, but I trust him. I decree and declare that you shall be in total peace and in every situation in your life. You will know that this is your last day of ever being concerned about whether you're going to live or die, whether you're going to make it or be successful. Come on, tell your neighbor, you cannot fail. So you got destiny on board, and I wasted a lot of time in my life, and I don't have time to waste anymore. I'm ready to live my future. I'm ready to go all the way with Jesus to live purpose and death. The truth is that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. The more you go after God, the more you will find yourself. The more you go after God, the more you will find your destiny. The truth is your momentary life afflictions are working together for a greater purpose and a greater weight of glory. You better focus on the truth. See, when the reverence is down, then the miracles are taken hostage. When we begin to see our man and woman of God as, 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 as Rob and Jackie and Jill and Joe and, you know, we all just hang out with one another, then we take the miracles hostage. The move of God is held hostage. Why? Because there is no reverence. So that when the man or woman of God speaks, it's not as if God speaking it's like let me see I don't like what you're saying right now you know when I was coming up when pastor said meet at seven we met at seven when pastor said be here for Bible study we were at Bible study because when my man of God spoke it was God speaking to me but now Oh, help us, Holy Ghost. And now, we have people gathering together and the reverence is not there because the enemy is putting out pictures to dumb down the reverence. Huh? So that even the scripture says that Jesus, not that he wasn't all powerful, not that he didn't have the power to work miracles, huh? but in his own country, where folks got real familiar, he could not perform many miracles there. Huh? Why couldn't he do it there? Because the atmosphere was full of common folks. Folks that wanted to remember and talk about how he was the carpenter's son. Huh? Mary's son. Him being Mary's son doesn't get you a miracle. Being a carpenter's son doesn't get you a miracle. Huh? Pastor, living where he lives doesn't get you a miracle. Driving whatever he drives doesn't get you a miracle. What gets you the miracle and makes the lame walk and the dumb see is because all of the anointing. God put his hands on it here. Somebody shout, bring back the reverence. Bring back the reverence. You want to see a Holy Ghost take over? You want to see a powerful move of God when we will get back 
and rebuild the walls of reverence. Reverence, Lord, have mercy for God. Reverence for the things of God. Reverence for the man of God that God has set in your life. And then you're talking about miracles. When those folks died, Ananias and Sapphira, after they lied and died, the Bible says, hallelujah, there was a great add to the church. All of a sudden, miracles broke out. All of a sudden, healings broke out. All of a sudden, hallelujah, breakthrough broke out. All of a sudden, many souls were saved. People were running by the droves, coming to be saved. What happened? What happened was the people became afraid. They became afraid of how they served God. They got a greater reverence that we can't do this any way that we want to do this. They got a greater reverence that I better check myself before I wreck myself. They got a greater reverence that I can't just serve them any old kind of way, but I got to do it with my whole heart, with all of my mind and with all of my soul and everything that is within me. And so... Nehemiah is going to rebuild these walls. It takes a team. It takes a people. Hallelujah. And rebuilding the walls, we got to rebuild the unity. The day of the solo act is over. It is the trick of the enemy. People running off instead of linking up and being one with the assignment that is over the house. Now they come, you got to watch them because all they're trying to do is make connections. Huh? They're trying to network. This is not the place of your networking. This is the place for the assignment that God has given this house for everybody to come together to rebuild the walls. See, 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 see. you send them in the back and they're supposed to be getting information to make sure that these souls stay saved and to follow up with them. And then they want to tell them about their private prayer meeting. They want to tell them about their woman's group. See, it is nothing but the spirit of the enemy. They catch you in a parking lot and then they prophesy to you after you already been prophesied to through the priest word that is preached from this pulpit and it is not about being one and rebuilding cities and impacting this world but it is about building their separate kingdom and not the kingdom how come next time with a popular miss maybe i think i get to preach like this because i don't even care i never asked for this i never asked to preach around the world I never asked for that. I just asked for his presence. This amazing God that gave me peace and changed my life. Loved me. When I thought I was impossible to be loved. And here it is. I want you to hear this because this church has a major assignment. Locally and abroad. And so what it is is that the enemy, when Nehemiah was going to rebuild those walls, it took everybody. It took everybody, it took the people that made the perfumes. It took everybody that was in different sectors, in different areas, the priests, everyone. Everyone joined together to rebuild. You saw in this one and that one. If you read all through the th third chapter, and next to him, and next to him. You see the words, and next to him, and next to him. In other words, there were so many of them together. There was always, and next to him. See, God is calling us to the place of unity, to rebuild the walls of unity. And unity means sometimes I got to make the decision that is for the best for all of us and not necessarily myself. See, 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 the concern is now, as you see people making decisions, even in Christendom, making decisions for what is best for their empire, best for their kingdom, and not necessarily the kingdom. Sometimes you got to just go ahead and lay down what you're doing in this moment and say, I'm going to get together and I'm going to link up because this assignment right here that is going on needs my attention. I need to be involved. I need to be a part of it. And they catch you outside in the parking lot of hey, says, I see, I see, I see. And see, since most people, a lot of people don't study their Bible, they walk out and they need a prophetic word anyway. They need somebody to tell them something. And so then they say, I see. Uh -huh. Or they find out somebody they think is a weak link among the preachers. And they say, you know what? They don't use you enough. They don't use you enough in ministry. That is the spirit of the devil. That is the enemy. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? Uh -huh. uh, I, I know that spirit. I remember one time I was out there and my, my husband was preaching. And, and, and somebody came and tried to say something to me. And said, so you got to know how to deal with it. I turned around and said, that is nothing but the devil. Uh, see, because guess what? The Lord wouldn't tell you to bring confusion. When it's your set time, when it's your moment, nothing will 
will be able to stop it. But see, the enemy will try to trick you and get you to move before timing. So you're half done, half baked, and anything half done don't taste good. You're under good leadership, they will know the right timing. You gotta set them a telling to meet you at Starbucks. And then now we got a separate Bible study going on. But see, you got to make sure what you're doing is going along with the vision. If you don't, because if you don't do that, your A vision will cause D vision. So you got to make sure that the vision that you have is in line with the word of God and the vision of the house so that it does not cause confusion. And so somebody say, rebuild the walls of unity. And so here it is. You are carrying heaven's baby. You are an assignment. You are an assignment. God has impregnated, impregnated you with the agenda of heaven. And there's some things that he's calling you to rebuild the waste cities. He's calling you to be a repairer of the breach. He's calling you to go in and be an answer and be a solution and to bring strategies to problems that are going on in this common world today. God is sending you in that is not afraid of the dark. You're not afraid of the dark because you've already been in the dark. And God has given you the victory. You're not afraid to take out the head the giant because God has already given you victories that were in private so you are ready now to move forward and take out the head of the enemy well here it is now Nehemiah got permission he got permission from God and then he got favor from the king to go ahead and rebuild the walls and then here comes the enemy see maybe the reason why you're going through the hell and the warfare that you are dealing with is because of the anointing that is on your life and the assignment that you're carrying the warfare that you experience is an indicator to the anointing and the assignment that you are carrying. So here it is, the enemies decide to conspire together, to get together, to frustrate the purpose. In other words, to distract them, to get them away from building, from doing what it is that they're supposed to be doing. They're doing a good work. They're doing the work of the Lord. They're doing what heaven is pleased with. But now here comes the enemy. You know, there's a simple remedy for that. If you don't ever want to be confronted, if you don't ever want to have any obstacles, if you don't ever want to have any enemies, if you don't ever want to have any hindrance, just don't do anything. But whenever you go to do something for God, you better believe when you say, I'm going to move for God, I'm going to do for God, the enemy rises up and says, I'm going to stop you. I'm going to try to hinder you. And so here are these enemies. It's the same old thing. Come on. When you think about it, there's a method to the madness. It's the same old thing all the time. And some of you can pretty much see, guess what? Every time you go to step out and do something for God, every time you go to obey, every time you're on a major assignment, just some dumb stuff just happens. Well, that's what happened to Nehemiah, just dumb stuff. And so then let me say this to you. Stop getting upset about the dumb stuff. You know what's going to happen. It goes with the territory. Come on. Don't get upset about the dumb stuff. Just be regal this time and just soar above it because you know God's got you. He's going to handle that. He's going to shut that down. It's not going to work. It's temporary. Have you ever had a situation right before you get ready to do something major? Lord have mercy, right before you get ready to do something major, right before you go to do uh, what God told you to do, then here you get a dumb phone call, or, 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 or your assistant bring you some information that you really just don't want to hear, and, and, and then that thing works on you to try to distract you, because distractions come to disturb in mind and in purpose, and so what they do is compete against your focus to gain your attention, they compete against your focus to gain your attention, compete against your focus to gain your attention, in other words, wants to take you away from the assignment, take you away from what God told you to do, move you away from obedience so that you are now being in crisis management instead of soaring in the things that God told you to do. And so you'll find out that when you go out there and just do what God told you to do, when you go to do it and you come back, have you ever gone and it was chaotic and came back and it was in peace? It was about distracting you to get you to not do what God wanted you to do. And so these enemies got together and said, we're going to frustrate the purpose, huh? We're going to frustrate the purpose that Sam Ballard and Tobias got together. Isn't that something that people that don't even like each other will become friends just to get you? Isn't that something they couldn't stand each other? But now they're having tea and crumpets. They're having tea and crumpets in the name of you to destroy you because they want to get rid of you. But that's all right. The Bible says that when Nehemiah heard what they were doing, the Bible says, and because of them... We turned in prayer, and because of them, Nehemiah put a prayer in. See, we ought to thank God for our enemies. Our prayer life wouldn't be as sharp as it is if we didn't have enemies. Our prayer life wouldn't be as great as it is if we didn't have obstacles. Our prayer life wouldn't be as strong as it is if we had not been in the furnace of affliction. But Nehemiah said, and because of them, we prayed. In the fourth chapter, he said, we pray. We turn to prayer. Okay, you want to mess with me? You want to mess with me? You want to mess with me? 
You want to start with me? See, some of you need to ask your enemies, are you sure? Are you sure? You want to mess with my family? Are you sure? You want to mess with my children? Are you sure you want to park up this street? Because, see, I don't fight fair. If you're ever in Richmond, Virginia, or Charlotte, North Carolina, Bishop Warren and I would love to see you. It is the premier place of worship. It will be an experience you will never forget. See you soon. Is the bondage in your life bigger than your faith? Are relationships or circumstances holding you back from God's perfect plan? Change your life today with unstoppable faith, discovering the indestructible you. In this life-changing book, Dr. Pulling shares step-by-step -step biblical principles of faith that are revealed through applying God's Word to your everyday life. As you read, you'll discover how to stand firm on every promise that God has ever made you and ultimately discover the indestructible you. Unstoppable faith can be yours today for the low introductory price of $19.95 for hardback or $14.95 for paperback. Discover the indestructible you or visit us on the web at unitednationschurch.org. Don't delay. Get your copy today. I'll put a call in on you. You mess with me, I'll put a call in. See, what Nehemiah was saying is because they came up against us, we put a call in to heaven. We talk to God about... Let me tell you something. You don't have to take that nonsense. You don't have to take that junk. All you got to do is put a call in. Put a call in when it gets to be too much. Put a call in when the enemy is coming up against you. Put a call in when it's messing with your children. Put a... Tell your neighbor, put a call in. Oh, my God, I hear heaven coming. See, heaven is sitting there looking at us sometimes, frustrated, aggravated. And heaven is saying, what you want? What you want? Ask of me of heaven is on your side all you got to do is put a call in and divine intervention is gonna show up for you all you got to do is put a call in and supernatural aid is coming to you all you got to do is put a call in and heaven will shut it down you ought to tell three people I'm about to put a call Situations of my life. Tell him, put a call in. Put a call in. Tell him about your son. Tell him about your daughter. Tell him, Lord, enough is enough. I'm looking for heaven to shut it down. Tell him, Lord, send help now. Say, Lord, deal with this situation. Put a call in and watch God work the impossible. Watch God do the supernatural. Watch God heal that body. Watch God put the broken pieces back together again. Put a call It became to be too much. All of a sudden, with this and that, and that and this, they became weak. They became frustrated. Their hands were weakened to the point where they began to say, we can't do this. But Nehemiah said, remember the Lord. Imprint him on your mind in this assignment.
need your strength. I don't need your power. You just place me and watch me do. In seconds, God said, wreck it, break it. Yes, Holy Ghost. He said to tell you, you will see this in record breaking time. Just like that. Just like that. In the realm of suddenly. Just like that. I tell you to praise him because it won't be. As long as it has. But today, oh my God, God said some of you, God have been like acting like it had permanent revenue, residence, like this is how it is, God said not so, it is not permanent, today, Today, I deal with your adversary. Today, today, I heal that broken heart. Today, your child is coming back to God. Today, today, today. Legal issues. My God, my God, I hear the Holy Ghost in this place. You are leaving here with a determination to rebuild foundational walls. Somebody's going back to the basics. Back to the basics. Bible study, prayer, fasting, the basics. Woo! That worked then and they work now. You are also leaving here knowing that your God is fighting for you. Divine assistance, intervention, supernatural aid has now been released to you. You better watch heaven do his handiwork. We hope that your faith has been charged by today's broadcast. Call toll-free at 1-855-28-FAITH. That's 1-855-283-2484. Operators are standing by to take your call or simply go online to medinapullings.com. The proceeding was paid for.